Hello, everybody. Let's take a look at some skeletal muscle. As with most things in the body, we find that we have uh, structures and we have two liners around each of those. So with skeletal muscle, we're going to see an outermost liner here. That outermost liner will uh, encompass the entire muscle. It's going to go down to the tendon and attach the bone and everything. That outermost membrane is called the fascia. Now, if we take a look on the inside of that fascia, we're also going to find another membrane, and that's called the epimyceum. Epimyceum, epi means outer part, but remember that lives just inside of the fascia. If I pull those two membranes away then, I'm going to see that the individual bundles right here, these bundles are going to fall out. Those bundles are called fascicles. Okay, watch your spelling on this one, F-A-S-C-I-C-L-E, as you see on your checklist. Um, that is one of those things that do get people in spelling, so watch out. Those bundles are called fascicles, and of course, everything has to have two wrappers. So the outermost wrapper of every fascicle is called the perimyceum. Now, this does get confusing, especially when we look down in here. There's an outer liner here. Don't confuse that with what we said was the epimyceum and then the fascia. So there's actually like three layers, and you're going to find a fourth one there. But don't get too confused. Um, think of it as individual wrappers. Uh, for the fascicle, and you'll be fine. The outer wrapper of the fascicle is called the paramyceum. Inside of that, then, all of this is then considered the endomyceum as we look inside here. So we're seeing three dimensional cross sections, um, and that's going to help. Now, you'll notice that if I pull those two wrappers away, we're now going to be seeing these pieces come out. And these are the individual cells of the muscle. And so we are going to be calling those the myofibers. Okay, a fiber, not fibril. So watch those things. It's little nuances that can be um, making all the difference. Now, since we're talking about animal cells, they all have a cell membrane. That cell membrane sits right on top of the cell. And so we refer to that as a circle lemma, or maybe if you want to get more specific, a sarcoplasmic um, membrane or whatever. So uh, there's lots of terms that could work there. Sarcoplasmic membrane, circle lemma, they all refer to the same thing. Just inside of that, is a little network system, a communication system. He's going to be coming into play later on when we're talking about muscles, but it is a network system just inside the sarcolemma, and we call that the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So if I pull those two layers away, what we're going to find is that individual little fibrils are going to be uh, found inside. That's these guys, as we see inside the cells. Those are called myofibrils. Those little bundles making up the fiber. And then you'll notice there are individual things inside of that. There's, I just color coded them as a blue one and a red one, but inside the fibril are little myofilaments. They go by specific names of actin and myosin. Later on, you're gonna see that actin is active. It actually moves and myosin serves as kind of the anchor. But the important part behind all of this, as we get further into this chapter, is you're going to see whatever happens at these levels of the myosin and at the actin levels, you're going to see that whatever happens at those two regions um, and how the muscle works, that will affect how the overall muscle works. So we got to start with the muscle structures. We got to look at the wrappers and how the overall muscle is going to function. Even as we take a look at this cross section here, you see what we did. We just cut this muscle in half so you could see kind of head on how this thing is set up. And that'll help us to understand the, the mechanics as we look at the physiology of how muscles contract.